how many ordered pairs x, y satisfy the system of equations shown above? So the first thing I would do is grab this and plug it in for x. Um, right. Um, well, actually, before I even look at anything else, so this is a line, and this one will be a parabola, right? So in general, there's a couple of possibilities. One, I could have the line cross twice. I could also have the line cross once. I could have the line cross zero times. So I know infinitely many is not a possible solution unless I have a linear, linear system. Here I have a linear quadratic system. So now, uh, let's see if there's any shortcuts. Hmm. Well, I could at least say where the roots of this parabola are going to be. So we're going to have a root at 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 halves, and x equals negative 9. So I know that negative 9 and 3 halves are going to be where my roots are, and it's a positive value of a, so we get a quadratic that looks like that. And I could at least say where the y-intercept is of this line, if I make it y equals. So it would be x minus 5 over 2. I could divide by 2 in each and every spot. So the slope would be 1 half, and the y-intercept is negative 5 halves. So let's see. Uh, so negative 5 halves somewhere around here. Okay, and the slope of one half. So what we'd like to see is just see if what this y-intercept is of the parabola. So if we set x equal to zero, we'd find the y-intercept. So we'd get y equals um, zero minus three, so negative three, and then zero plus nine, so nine. Am I doing this right? Zero minus three is negative three, zero plus nine is nine, Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. Ah, so this hits quite low at negative 27. So this is definitely going to have two solutions for that reason. because we, we know the line will go above that, right? OK. Ken and Paul each ordered a sandwich at a restaurant. The price of Ken's sandwich was x dollars, and the price of Paul's sandwich was 1 more than Ken. So that would be 1 plus x. If Ken and Paul split the cost of the sandwiches evenly. So the total cost would be 2x plus 1. Okay. And they're splitting it evenly. So each they would pay divided by 2. And we have to add in a 20% tip. So to do a 20% tip, we do a 20% increase. So we use a multiplier. Start with 100%. We add 20%. That gives us 120%. Then we move the decimal twice to the left, getting us 1.2 as our multiplier. We take this whole thing and multiply it by 1.2. This is the amount that they would each have to pay. So um, if I distribute the 1.2 into the numerator, I end up with 2.4x plus 1.2, and I divide by 2. So I can divide by 2 on each separately. Here I'll get 1.2x plus 0.6. Answer choice C. Functions f and g defined by f of x equals this and g of x equals that are graphed in the xy plane. For the graphs of f of g intersect the points k0 and negative k0. What is the value of k? All right, so we want to find the intersection points of these graphs. Notice that the intersection point actually happens to line up with the roots of each parabola. OK, so there's two ways I could do it. Um, I could, for example, just find the roots of this first parabola. Uh, well, I could factor out a 2, and I get 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. Divide by 2 on both sides gets rid of that. Then I could factor this with difference of two squares. So we get 2x uh, plus and minus 1. Okay, and then I could t-chart. get 2x is negative 1, x is negative 1 half. And 2x is 1, x is 1 half. Okay, so the values of k would be 1 half. In the expression above is rewritten in the form a plus bi, what is the value of a? So we notice here the only issue is that i is like a square root, and you're not allowed to have square roots in the denominator. 
So we need to rationalize, and the best way to do that is to use a conjugate. So we do three plus two i on top and bottom here, and we're gonna have to FOIL. So eight times three is 24. Inside is minus three i. Outside is plus uh, 16 i, right? And then the last is minus two i squared. So that would be 24 uh, plus 13i minus 2i squared. Now for the denominator. We get 9, and we get minus 6i plus 6i, which cancels out. And then we get minus 4i squared. Now we realize that i squared would have to equal minus 1. If you just square both sides of this, you can convince yourself of that. Then you could substitute minus 1 in everywhere you see an i squared. You get 24 plus 13i uh, minus 2 times negative 1. Then you get 9 minus 4 times negative 1. So you get 24 plus 13i, and then minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. And then minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. So you get 24 plus 13i uh, plus 2. So this should actually be 26. Divided by 9 plus 4, which is 13. We could divide that 13 on both separately since it's a common denominator. 13, 13. 26 over 13 is 2, and this just leaves i. So 2 plus i is the result, and they want the value of a where it's a plus bi. So if it's a plus bi, then the coefficient is 2. So we choose choice a. In the quadratic equation above, k and p are constants. What is the solution of k? All right, so if you look at these, it looks like the quadratic formula is being used. So we will do the same. So x squared minus k over 2x, and we'll swing the 2p over minus 2p equals 0. And so we'll use x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have a, b, and c being the coefficients of our polynomial. a would equal 1, b would equal negative k over 2. That's the item in front of the x and negative 2p would be for c. Now we just plug in. We get negative b, which is going to be k over 2, plus or minus square root of b squared, so that's going to be k squared over 4, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 2p. Divide all that by 2 times a, so just 2. So we get k over 2, plus or minus the square root of k squared over 4, minus, uh, let's see, well actually minus 4 and minus 2p. So there's two negative signs which makes a plus. It's going to be plus 8p all over 2. All right. Now we check out the choices to see what's going on here. And okay, it appears that they are dividing by 2. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll divide by 2 separately on each. So divided by 2 and divided by 2. Now since this already has a denominator, it doesn't need another one, I could just put the 2 there. I can also turn the 2 into a 2 over 1 and flip and multiply. So I get k over 4 plus or minus the square root of, oh, and what I can do here is instead of dividing by 2, I can just multiply by 1 half. So I'll have 1 half the square root of k squared over 4 plus 8p. And we're getting warmer, but we're not quite there yet. So now we have to absorb this 1 half inside the square root. So to do that, I can rewrite 1 half to be the square root of 1 fourth. Because if I square root the top, I get 1. I square root the bottom, I get two, uh, a 2. So it's the square root of 1 fourth. So I rewrite it as the square root of 1 fourth. That way, I can bring it into the, the parentheses here. k over 4 plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth times k squared over 4 plus 8p. And then I can bring it inside using distribution. So k over 4 plus or minus the square root of k squared over 16 plus 8p over 4. All right? Simplify this down. So k over 4 plus or minus the square root of k squared over 16 plus 8 over 4 is just 2. So it should be 2p. And now we can check to see, all right, we're getting close, but we're not quite there. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, oh, okay, I see what's happening. 
So at this point, we would like to uh, pull something out from here. So k over 4 plus or minus the square root. And let's see. If I pull out a factor of 2, OK, then I'll be left with k squared over 8 plus 4p. Is that right? OK. Um, yeah, so what they're doing, they're actually getting the entire denominator out of it. So instead of pulling out that, let's go for broke here. Let's pull out a factor of 16 on the bottom. So we're taking 1 16th out of this fraction. So that gives us k squared plus, and if I pull out a 1 16th here, I'll have 32p, right? 32p. And then I can sort of think of this as two separate square roots now. And then the square root of 1 16th is just 1 fourth, isn't it? OK, 32p. And then this 1 fourth can just go to the bottom. So k over 4 plus or minus k squared plus 32p over 4. All right, choice B.